Hello class. So this lesson is 5.3 types of energy and the law of conservation of energy. Okay, in 5.2 we learned what energy was and we got to see kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. And at the very bottom I said when we combine those two things that's called mechanical energy. Now it turns out there are actually a whole bunch of different types of energy but they can all be broken down into potential energy and kinetic energy. So kinetic energy means when something is moving and potential energy is just stored energy that can be converted into other things. It could be converted into kinetic energy. Everything can be broken down into those two types of energy and um, we've got a table here that just lists a bunch of different common types of energy that we might look at. And they're broken down into two categories, some that have both potential and kinetic energy going on and some that are only potential energy. So you don't need to know all of these, you don't need to memorize this list or anything, but this is just a list of a bunch of types of energy that we might see throughout the unit. The first one here is mechanical energy, and that was at the very end of last lesson we talked about mechanical. That's the combination of gravity and kinetic energy. Okay, so mechanical energy. We also have radiant energy, and that's what we call light. You'll see that to the right here we say that um, radiant energy are created by electromagnetic fields. And you see that we have potential and kinetic energy in there. We also have electrical energy. We actually have two types of electrical energy, but current energy, current electric uh, electricity, is when we have um, a current running through a wire or through a system. It's flowing charges. And so you can see there's kinetic energy there as well as potential energy. Okay, we have thermal energy, and that's what we call heat. So when something is hot, it has thermal energy. That actually is the random movement of molecules, randomly moving molecules. Okay, we also have sound energy here, sound energy. And that comes from oscillating molecules, so when, when the molecules are vibrating back and forth. Okay, so those all have both kinetic and potential energy inside of them. And this next set only have potential energy. So this is our gravitational energy. And that just comes from the force of gravity. We have another electrical energy. This is specifically from static charges. So when you don't have a current running, you just have static electricity. Then that just has potential energy. Okay, also nuclear energy from the protons and neutrons in a nucleus. We have elastic energy. That's from stretched materials or compressed materials. And we have chemical energy. And that's, that comes from the, the molecular bonds between um, particles. So for, for instance, H2O. The hydrogen and oxygen are bonded. That bond is chemical energy. Okay, so um, those are all our different types of energy that we might come across. Now, I'll put arrows beside the ones we're, we're definitely going to look more at in this course. So we've talked already about mechanical energy. We're going to look more at thermal energy and um, sound. We're going to see more gravitational energy, of course, nuclear energy, and those are the, sort of the main ones that we're looking at in this course. Okay, we have all these different types of energy, and we can actually convert between these different types of energy. That's called an energy transformation, where we change energy from one type to another. And an example of that might be photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, that's what plants do to convert radiant energy or light from the sun into chemical energy which they store inside themselves. And that's actually where on Earth, that's where all of energy is coming from. It's coming from the sun as radiant energy. Plants then convert that by photosynthesis into chemical energy, and then we eat those plants, or other animals eat those plants, 
and convert that chemical energy into other forms. We might convert it into kinetic by running around. Uh, we might convert it into thermal energy to, to warm ourselves, to heat our bodies. Um, we might convert it into electrical to have all of our thoughts, to have our, our um, neurons and, and these sorts of things firing. So all of this is happening. It's all converting energy from one type to another. And this all comes down to a really important idea, the law of conservation of energy. And this is the main reason why we study energy, is this law here. And that tells us that the total amount, oops, the total, the total amount of energy in the universe in the whole universe is conserved. That means that energy is not created or destroyed. It can only change forms. It can change between these different types of energy that we've looked at. Okay, and that actually lets us do some very cool calculations and some very cool physics. We'll look at that in an example of a diver. So it says here, a 65 kilogram diver dives from a 10 meter high platform into the water below. What is his mechanical energy when he is on the platform before diving? We have a picture to the right here. And you can see that it summarizes his gravitational energy and his kinetic energy. You see he has 6.4 kilojoules of gravity, 0 kilojoules of kinetic. So that means his total mechanical energy is 6.4 kilojoules. Well, we'll do that math ourselves down here, so um, just so that we can verify that. So he's 10 meters high. He's not moving at all. He's just on that, that board. So his gravita gravitational energy, that's going to equal mgh. And his mass here is 65. G is 9.8. And he's 10 meters up, so he has 65 times 9.8 times 10. And that gives us a value of 6370 joules, which is 6.37 kilojoules. Now, see, I, I'm using kilojoules, kj. A kilojoule is 1,000 joules, just like a kilometer is 1,000 meters. OK, so we have 6.37 kilojoules here. And do we have any kinetic energy? Well, he's not moving at all. So ek is 0 at this point. And that means that his em mechanical energy is eg plus ek, which is going to be 6.37 kilojoules. Great. So we know his mechanical energy at the top. On the next page, it asks, what is mechanical energy when he's halfway to the water? OK, he's halfway to the water. You can see in the picture, um, it has the math there. We want to ignore that for a second, because we're going to calculate our, that ourselves. So we have gravitational energy is mgh. We have his mass was 65. Gravity is 9.8. And his height now is 5 meters above the water. So this gives us MGH 3185 joules. That's his gravitational energy. Now, for the kinetic energy, I'm going to need to find the speed of this diver. OK. And you'll find out that in our energy calculations, we won't actually have to do this anymore um, because of the law of conservation of energy. But just to verify things, we're going to try it this way first. So I'm going to say ek is equal to 1 half mv squared. And I need to find out his v here. So vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta d. OK, we know that his initial speed was 0, jumping from the board. Acceleration is 9.8 downwards. Delta D is, is 5 downwards. So let's see here. We've got VF 
is equal to the square root of 2a delta d, which is the square root of 2 times 9.8 downwards, times negative 5 downwards. That's how far he's traveled. So we should get a final speed. Let's see here. The square root of 2 times 9.8 times 5, we get 9.9 .9 meters per second. So if I put that in, we get EK is equal to 1 half, mass is 65, 9.9 .9 squared. This gives us 3185 joules as well. So you'll see that halfway down, he has 3185 joules of gravity, 3185 joules of kinetic energy, EM is EK plus EG. We get 2 times 3185, which gives us 6.37 kilojoules again, which was our answer on the, the first question. Now, the last part, what is his mechanical energy when he reaches the surface of the water? Well, you might notice part one, we said it was 6.37. Part two, we say it's 6.37. At the end, you know, I could do the math. I could figure out his speed and do kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. But the idea here is that energy is conserved. So if we started with 6.37, it doesn't matter how far down he's gone, he still keeps all of that. So 6.37 kilojoules, I don't even need to do the math. I know that that's how much energy he will always have. And he's just converting it from gravity into kinetic energy. So the further down he falls, the faster he gets to compensate for his loss in gravitational energy. And that's how our conservation of energy works. We can actually use that. And um, so we're, we're going to try using that in this next problem. A 1.1 kilogram camera slips out of a photographer's hands while he is taking a photograph. The camera falls 1.4 meters to the ground below. Part A says, what is the camera's gravitational potential energy relative to the ground when it is in the photographer's hands? So EG equals MGH. We have the mass is 1.1. G is 9.8. And the height above the ground is 1.4 meters. So this gives us a gravitational potential energy of 15 joules. That's how much energy it starts with. It's not moving at the start, so that's the total energy we have to work with. Now it says, using the law of conservation of energy, determine the camera's kinetic energy at the instant it hits the ground. Okay, nothing has been added. That means that the kinetic energy now, if EG has become zero, well, we can say at the ground, EG is equal to zero joules. So therefore, EK must equal 15 joules. All of that gravity, gravitational energy, has been converted into uh, kinetic. And that is because EM is equal to EG plus EK. And EM is conserved. So our total mechanical energy is the same at the start and the finish. Okay. So we know that the kinetic energy at the bottom is the same as at the top. Or sorry, the, the total energy is the same. So we know that at the bottom, our kinetic energy is 15 joules. So EK is equal to 15 joules. We also know that that's equal to 1 half mv squared. So if I want to find my speed, v is equal to the square root of EK, well, 2 EK, over m. That's just rearranging the equation above. So this gives me the square root of 2 times 15 divided by our mass, which was 1.1. This gives us 5.2 meters per second. So that tells us how fast it's moving at the end. The speed is 5.2 meters per second. You see that that was, I hope, a lot easier to solve 
then using your kinematics equation, which you could have done. You, you have the distance, you have the acceleration, you have all those pieces. But here we just say energy is conserved. That means that at the bottom, we have our total kinetic energy that goes into its speed. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with the homework. The homework.